It's really exciting to see how these technologies are making a difference in people's lives, creating more inclusion and access and helping break down barriers that divide us. It provides hope for a brighter future. And speaking of the future, I want to let you in on a story about Raj and some of his colleagues and friends. During the 1990s, Raj and other distinguished computer scientists served together on the Microsoft Technical Advisory Board, it's also known as the TAB. After gathering from around the world for meetings in Seattle, they often spent the evening chatting over dinner. Raj, a perennial optimist, as you've seen, about the potential of new technologies on the horizon, would often make a prediction about the future. Something concrete, but always audacious. Not surprisingly, that would lead to a friendly wager among a group about whether that prediction would come true or not. They made these bets on the future for nearly a decade. Well, what were some of the bets? Let me give you a few examples. In 1993, they bet that within 10 years, AI would have more impact on society than the transistor. In 1996, they bet that by 2006, a production car would be available that drives itself and costs less than 20% premium over other cars. Their bets usually focused on computing, but once they even bet if Arnold Schwarzenegger might run for governor and win. Really. What were the stakes? They ranged from dinner of the winner's choice to $1,000. And they did keep track of who won and who lost and who paid their bets. So tonight, we're going to have a little fun and play a game called Bet on the Future. And as a surprise, we're excited that five of the original group have joined us tonight live for a reunion. First, let me introduce Ed Lazowska. Ed is a professor and chair emeritus of the Paul Allen School of Computer Science and Engineering at the University of Washington. He focuses on computing and communication systems, data intensive discovery, and public policy issues. Welcome, Ed. Next, meet Gordon Bell. Gordon served as a computer science professor at Carnegie Mellon. He led research and development at Digital Equipment Corporation and was a researcher at Microsoft. Here at CHM, we salute him as the co-founder of our original museum. And in 2003, as a CHM fellow, and a long time, even today, active trustee. It's always great to have you with us, Gordon. In the center is Raj Reddy. Well, we've been celebrating him all night, so he's not going to get any further introduction. Next is John Hennessy. John is a computer science professor and the director of the Knight Hennessy Scholars at Stanford University, where he also served as the 10th president. He co-founded MIPS Computer Systems and Atheros Communication, and now serves as chair of the tech firm Alphabet. John, we always appreciate you joining us here at the museum. Last, but by no means least, please welcome Andy Van Dam. Andy is a professor of computer science at Brown University, and we look forward to honoring Andy as another 2021 Fellow Award recipient on September 23rd for his lifetime, long, excuse me, lifetime of contributions to computer graphics, hypertext and education. Welcome, Andy. And of course, to serve as our host for the game show, please welcome back Dr. Talithia Williams. Thank you, Dano. And welcome to the world's favorite game show, Bet on the Future. Hello, gentlemen. It's such an honor to be with you tonight. We look forward to hearing your vision of the future. But before we get started, there's one more important player in our game, and that is you. That's right, once we hear from our honorary panelists, we wanna see how you bet. If you look above the chat, you'll see a tab that says bet here. Just hit that and you can place your bet, yes or no. You can vote whenever you make up your mind. And now to get things rolling, I'm gonna throw it to tonight's honoree, Raj Reddy, to give us his 2021 prediction for the future. Raj, I have to unmute. Yeah, <laughs> I just unmuted. So uh, thank you uh, for the opportunity to give at another bet. 
I want to thank my friend Andy Van Dam for introducing me to Douglas Adams and Babelfish um, in the Hitchhiker's Guide to Galaxy. Babelfish acted as the universal translator. So my prediction today is we will have a digital Babelfish, which will hide in your ear and translate all the languages of the earth. To be more specific, in 10 years, anyone will be able to watch any movie or talk to anyone in any language. Why do I think I might win? Speech to speech translation technology has already been demonstrated for languages important for business. We just need to collect enough speech and language data about 100,000 hours of, uh, of speech and 100 million words of text for 100 or more orphan languages to realize the goal. This is doable. Why I might lose? It turns out that's not, the technology is not enough. You need accessibility and ease of use. The current UIs of Google Translate and Microsoft Translator both of whom, both of which are available as apps on your iPhone are clunky, you know, kind of painful to use them, but it, it, they work. But getting 100 or more orphan languages is going to take a lot of time. But for the same reason, Apple Watch will never become a runaway bestseller like iPhone. Conventional tools that we now have for translating languages are not going to work. It has to be completely non-intrusive. That's why I like the metaphor of babblefish. It must be in your ear, hide and nobody, <laughs> and then translate everything that's being said in all languages, recognize the language and translate. And uh, I'm saying all languages, we can settle for maybe the 100 most often commonly used languages because the rest of them can be derived from them. And it turns out uh, all of them, each one of them are spoken by 10 million people or more. So that's my prediction that we will be in 10 years, anyone will be able to watch any movie. And that's very important because most people don't necessarily want to talk to someone else speaking another language, but they want to be entertained. And the number of movies available in all the languages is significantly larger than any of the orphan language, or talk to anyone in any language. That's it. Thank you. Well, I love that, Raj. I mean, I can't wait to put one in my ear so I can eavesdrop and see if folks are talking about me in another language. But just to see how much we're betting, let's hear from Gordon Bell. Take it away, Gordon. Okay, well, I'm, uh, I'll bet against that, against, in this case, against my, Kind of against my better judgment. But on the other hand, I have a very good success ratio of betting against Raj. This is does have a fundamental problem is that I don't expect to be here in 10 years. Uh, <laughs> according to my parent and based on my parents and, and how I'm feeling and all of that. But uh, I will let my granddaughter, who's a computer scientist, uh, or a budding computer scientist take take me over. Now, on the other hand, how much how much is this, this is usually a thousand dollar bet. So now that old thousand dollars is really a two thousand dollar bet. Now today I looked at the CPI, <laughs> and by the time it uh, by the time we pay off, it'll be back to uh, worth a thousand dollars again. So uh, I'll make it a $2,000 bet. The Computer History Museum will hold the stakes and uh, be the judge as to uh, who, uh, who, who wins and loses. Uh, if, if we've got some very wild side bets, then I think uh, it may end up as we just put money in a pot and the winners get at least get their money back on that because I have a fear that people are going to uh, totally agree with Raj, which is 
uh, not not good for me as a <laughs> as a as a better here. So anyway, uh, uh, this is a good one to bet on, and uh, uh, I wish uh, hope it's all going to happen. Uh, but I'm certainly uh, think there are enough things going on on in that bet that I can probably figure a way to weasel out of it, no matter how close he comes uh, comes to it. So I'm. I'm I'm on the no. Yeah, I'm in for two thousand dollars. The museum gets the museum needs the money now. By the way, so uh. I'll turn it over to somebody. Well, Gordon else. has bet no uh, against you, Raj. So it looks like we've got some disagreement. He's put up two thousand dollars. In his bet of no, he doesn't, he's not sure if he's going to be around. We're going to have to keep him on ice so we make sure that he's here in 10 years. But let's see if others agree. John Hennessy, I'm coming to you. Well, for once, I think Raj could actually be right for the first time. I think there are, there are two <laughs> issues that I worry about in getting to, getting to yes on this, Raj. One is the last 10% problem. You'll get most of the way, but those last few languages will. But your 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 choice of the hundred most frequent languages makes it a lot better uh, probability. Um, the other thing I worry about is if we don't find a way to continue Moore's law, um, you won't be able to stick it in your ear because it'll burn your head up. And so we've got we've got to figure out how to extend that. And that's been so. You look at the progress in AI and deep learning. The progress we've made with hardware to empower those computers has been critical. I mean, that was, uh, you and I talked about this earlier. That's one of the things we were, we were wrong about. We didn't understand how much computer power it would take to really power AI systems at the level of human intelligence. And so those are the things we've got to solve. I'll certainly put up my $2,000 and I'm betting with Raj this time. <laughs> All right, so we've got one in favor. We've got one that's not in favor. So, okay, Roger, you're 50-50 now. Um, let's see who's next. Ed Lazowska, I'm coming to you. Tell me your assessment of the prediction and what's your bet. I'm gonna ask for a clarification. Uh, Raj, does the device have to be self-contained or can it talk to your phone as long as it's real time? The, the, it, it can talk to your phone. It talks to the cloud. It talks to the cloud, Ed. Come on. <laughs> it, it can be anywhere. I don't care. But right. the phone must be non-intrusive. It can be in your pocket. Yeah. Maybe hidden. But as far as I'm concerned, I don't even want to think about it. If I'm talking to you in Hindi and you're right. listening to it in English, you should be hearing it in real time and vice versa. Right. Yeah, to John's point, though, it doesn't have to burn up your ear. It can burn up your pocket. I, I worry about latency to the cloud. Right. Yeah. So, so as Gordon and John has said, you almost never lose money by betting against Raj because he is such an inveterate techno optimist. And that's the wonderful thing about Raj. He has, you know, three more zeros than anybody else in any, you know, and, and you know, he's just uh, always looking so far in the future. Uh, and I think the only time I bet with Raj, uh, I lost. And that was uh, betting that there was, uh, uh, no way that uh, uh, we would have the governor of California who we had for a period of time. Uh, so I'm going to vote with Raj. The one thing I want to say is I really like the dinner bets, although I will put up my $2,000. I like the dinner bets because the detail was the dinner was of the winner's choice. The losers had to pay and the price of the wine couldn't exceed the price of the food. And that set a plausible upper bound on what dinner could cost, but it was often way more than $1,000. Okay, so I am uh, uh, I am uh, with Raj in this case, and I'll put in my two thousand dollars for the museum. Thanks, Ed. All right, so we've got two bets that are with Raj. We've got one that is against. Now, audience, if you haven't done so, I want you to make sure you get your vote in now because we want to see where you land on this. And now let's go to our final panelist. Take it away, Andy Van Dam. What do you have to say? Well, so there's a spectrum of cockeyed techno-optimism, which our dear friend Raj occupies almost uniquely. And then there are the techno-skeptics, cynics, 
call them what you like, pessimists. I try to be kind of a pragmatist, and I'm very much in agreement with the, the last 10% or the last mile problem. I think the pragmatics of the situation really intrude. Uh, where are the financial incentives to nail all 100 languages and to nail them with a lot of background noise and environmental considerations and so on? Uh, having it be robust with that kind of UI that Raj has always preached is a heroic design task that hasn't been solved for any device as far as I'm concerned, not even the iPhone, let alone the iWatch. So I think the pragmatics will intrude and will get arbitrarily close, but not quite there. That's what makes it, you know. It so Andy, does that mean it. you're voting against Raj? I am or? reluctantly <laughs> betting against because I love Ooh. the quest. Gordon is so relieved. I, I think Raj, Ed, and I are going to have to pick up a collection to push the last 10% over the line. Exactly. <laughs> By the way, this group has not yet congratulated Raj this evening. Raj, just enormous congratulations and thanks for your friendship over so many years. Thank you. Raj, you're our hero. Indeed. Uh, and our model. We are mutual admiration society here. Right. <laughs> well, we're split 50-50, Raj. We've got two folks that are in support of you and two that are against. But you know who's going to be the tiebreaker tonight? It's going to be our audience. Let's see how our audience voted. Why don't we bring up those results? It looks like 68% of the audience is in favor of Raj's bet. 32% are against it. So thank you so much, audience. You've got some more support there, Raj. I think it's only fair that we give you the last word. Tell us what you think. I think Gordon and, and uh, Andy might win this bet. <laughs> But that's okay, because the, the fun will come in 12 years, so 15 years. I remember when uh, I was with John Hennessy and uh, others in 2007 for the, uh, at, at the Computer History Museum for the uh, Turing Award uh, dinner. And I had just lost the bet about autonomous driving cars to, and John said, I didn't think it will happen that fast, you know, because the, in 2007, uh, DARPA challenge and uh, grand challenge was won by Stanford at Sebastian Turn, the car driving 130 kilometers uh, with no, nobody there. But that's far cry from being able to buy one in the market. And that's the, the issue is going to be. Namely, it's not enough to simply demonstrate the technology. It has to be usable and friendly and so on. But I'm happy to, I, I'm sure I have a couple of other fr friends. We, we are happy to take Ed and, uh, you know, uh, Gordon and, and uh, Andy uh, to dinner any way you want to take us, uh, Gordon. But you have to be okay. around. You cannot leave us. <laughs> okay. I well, hope this the audience is all sending in their bets. Um, it's been fun to watch you all interact and get to sort of sit at your feet and listen to you have this conversation. And audience, it's been great to get your input as well. Hopefully you're also going to make your donation. It might not be for $2,000, but we'd love to see your donation as well. Thank you so much for playing Bet on the Future. And it's back to you, Daniel.